August 16, 2023. Ukraine war, approximately nine years and seven months into the invasion of Crimea. Day 539 of Special Putin's Operations. Big picture. Ukraine has officially cleared Eurozohain, and the Kremlin invaders are now forced to attempt to hold the village of Zavin. Shelling was unusually heavy across every contact line in the south and east. However the methods of shelling are notably different compared to last year at this time, with a very notable reduction in the use of field artillery shells. The Kremlin is using drone-delivered mortars, crew-launched mortars, or aerial bombs as a much larger percentage of their shelling attacks. At Robotine Ukraine has maintained their pressing attack against one of the larger field fortifications. The Kremlin is pushing hard to steal Kupiansk. Dnieper line. News about Kozachi Lahiri from Kremlin mouthpieces state that the Ukrainians have retreated from their landing under force. They said that on day one of the landing, so it's difficult to assess. Ukrainian sources have not spoken of the area. The Kremlin fired 358 shells into Kherson in the last day, suggesting new supply depots or front storage or supply regiments have been established. Zaporizhia Front. Ukraine continues to keep the contested line at the first pre-built field fortification outside of Robotyne. For a second day the Kremlin utilized heavy shelling and glide bombing near the Morky Yoli targeted Ukrainian troops well behind the ground contact line. East Front, Donetsk. Marienka and Avdiivka were repelled by Ukrainian forces, under heavy bombardment. The Kremlin made an attack at Krasnoharivka just north of Marienka, results were unclear at this time. Bakhmut area. Troops fighting for the Kremlin made an unsuccessful attack near Bakhmut. Neither side has mentioned Klishchivka, suggesting that combat losses may have been heavy for both armies. Considering the number of attacks reported in the course of a few days last week, this is very possible. One thing is certain, the Kremlin does not have hold of Klishchivka village. Oskil border front. Fighting around Kupiansk has been very heavy, and it appears the Kremlin may have been making gains in expanding the contested space over the last day. Oddly, while shelling was done across the front, this was perhaps the lightest shelled front, of those where combat troops are regularly engaged. Northern border. Three shard drones were shot down over Kharkiv. Something large or explosive was destroyed near the Kharkiv town of Verkny Saltiv on the Seversky Donets. Black Sea. The Ukrainian Navy officially reported that they have damaged or destroyed four of the six Kremlin landing ships in the Black Sea. These ships include the Kaiser Kunikov and the Novokokask both damaged in port, the Olengorsky Gornyak damaged recently while on duty, and the Saratov which was sunk in port. The spokesman suggested that another vessel may have been damaged, or recently destroyed, but refused to give more information. The Kremlin continues to keep five combat ships on patrol, none of them with missile capabilities. Ukraine world related. It's very nice that everyone is worried about the food sources for people outside of Ukraine. It sure would be bad if people outside of Ukraine died because Putin is currently killing people inside Ukraine. What a tragedy that would be. We must think of those outside Ukraine so they don't die tragically because of Putin's time killing Ukrainians. Ukraine needs to let people guess how some things are being destroyed in Kremlin land. Newer craft should not be publicly advertised, especially if they are successful. It's enough to say an attack was successful, or just to leave them guessing. Ukrainian unemployed women can be hired to cut and sew camouflage covers for each season. They can be hired to help pack supply boxes for towns and villages facing supply disruption due to combat, or to send to troops. They can be hired to cook and deliver meals for the elderly and displaced. They can be hired to work as nurse aides in hospital and recovery services. They can be hired to drive fuel to homes and businesses for winter. They can be hired to work as babysitters for mothers whose husbands are on the front. There is no good reason for anyone in Ukraine to be unemployed right now. For German missiles, the restriction ought to be acceptable, as long as Crimea is not included. It is perhaps insulting, but this isn't a time for goofy wounded pride issues, there are more than enough targets in and around Crimea which can use these missiles. And if one happens to fall off a truck and get reverse engineered into a steady supply of Ukrainian-made missiles, who would ever know? The European Jewish Congress has begun to lobby to get one of their friends removed from the sanction list, a man who currently employs 11,429 Russians in the business of creating nitrate and nitrogen fertilizers, which can be used in Kremlin weapons. A recent Pew Research poll suggests that the only nations where the population has increased its view of Russia after the invasion, include Nigeria, Kenya, Indonesia, and India. Sweden is putting together a military support package to be worth $313,500,000, their 13th aid package, hopefully to include plenty of Swedish snow gear. We aim to bring more. Like and subscribe.